Witchcraft is typically recognized both in historical contexts and modern day perceptions as the practice of harnessing supposed supernatural or magical abilities. A practitioner of witchcraft is known as a witch. Traditionally, the term witchcraft refers to the employment of magical or supernatural forces. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, witchcraft thus defined exists more in the imagination of contemporaries than in any objective reality. Yet this stereotype has a long history and has constituted for many cultures a viable explanation of evil in the world. Witchcraft was always portrayed as a malevolent force in societal and cultural narratives, explaining the belief in misfortune or ill will through supernatural scapegoating. This perspective fueled widespread witch hunts and trials, particularly in Europe and North America, where fear and misunderstanding led to the persecution of thousands. Despite this dark history, contemporary views on witchcraft have evolved. Today, witchcraft is often associated with spirituality and nature-based religions, such as Wicca, which focus attention on healing, positive magic, and harmony with the environment. This modern interpretation reflects a broader acceptance and understanding of diverse spiritual practices, moving away from the historically negative connotations associated with witchcraft. Globally, witchcraft is most commonly associated with the practice of magic, the belief in magical practices is present in cultures around the world, irrespective of their level of development. Many societies harbor a fear of certain individuals possessing the supernatural ability. The use of herbs, animal parts, and various substances in creating potions is common in witchcraft. The origins of what could be considered the earliest form of witchcraft can be traced back to shamanic traditions, which have their roots deep in the Paleolithic era, marking them as some of the most ancient spiritual practices known to humanity. These shamans, often revered within their communities, served as vital intermediaries between the world of the living and the realm of spirits. They employed various techniques to enter altered states of consciousness, commonly referred to as trance states. Within these trance states, they believed they could communicate with spiritual entities, harnessing this connection to perform critical societal functions. Their roles encompassed healing the sick, divining the future, guiding the souls of the deceased, and protecting the community from malevolent forces. The methods used to achieve these trance states varied widely, including rhythmic drumming, chanting, and the use of natural psychoactive substances, all aimed at inducing visions or spiritual journeys. Through these practices, shamans held a pivotal position in their societies, not just as healers or seers, but as essential conduits to the spiritual world, providing insight, guidance, and healing to their communities based on their interactions and experiences within these mystical states. In ancient Egyptian culture, magic was not merely a peripheral or superstitious element, but was instead deeply woven into the fabric of both their religious beliefs and their daily lives. This integration meant that spells, incantations, and rituals were commonplace practices, pursued with the intent to influence the natural and supernatural world to secure protection, promote health, and ensure justice. The Egyptians believed that magic was a gift from the gods that humans could use to maintain the balance of the cosmos, protect themselves from malevolent forces, and communicate with the deities. One of the most emblematic and enduring symbols of the significance of magic in ancient Egyptian civilization is the Book of the Dead. This collection is not a single tome, but rather a compilation of various spells, prayers, and incantations that were written over many centuries. The contents of the Book of the Dead were designed to guide the deceased through the dangerous journey of the afterlife, helping them overcome challenges, avoid perils, and enter the eternal paradise that awaited them according to Egyptian belief. These texts were often customized for the individual, inscribed on papyrus and buried alongside them in their tomb. The spells contained within the Book of the Dead encompassed a wide range of purposes, from protecting the soul from hazards to ensuring it had food, drink, and the ability to breathe and speak in the afterlife. The use of these spells reflects the Egyptians' belief in the power of the spoken and written word to affect the world around them and the afterlife beyond. In essence, for the ancient Egyptians, magic was a crucial tool for navigating the uncertainties of this world and securing a safe passage and a favorable existence in the next. In the ancient civilizations of Greece and Rome, magic and witchcraft were integral components of both society and spirituality. 
deeply interwoven with the religious and cultural practices of the time. These practices were involved a wide range of activities, from benign protective enchantments and healing rituals. The ancient Greeks had myths and legends that featured witches, with characters such as Circe and Medea standing out for their formidable magical abilities. Circe, known from Homer's Odyssey, was famed for her skill in potions and herbs, using these to transform Odysseus's men into animals. Medea, a figure in the mythology surrounding Jason and the Argonauts, was renowned for her knowledge of witchcraft, demonstrating the Greeks' fascination with the power of such mystical practices. These stories reflected the Greeks' beliefs in the effects of magical practices and their acknowledgement of magic. In Rome, the relationship with magic was similarly complex, with a particular emphasis on the legal implications of using magic. The Romans instituted laws against maleficium, a term that encompassed witchcraft, reflecting societal concerns over the potential for magic to disrupt the social order. The Twelve Tables, an early codification of Roman law, specifically condemned practices associated with magic, illustrating the efforts to control and regulate the use of supernatural powers within the society. Despite these prohibitions, the Romans, like the Greeks, incorporated various forms of benign magic and divination into their religious observances, revealing a nuanced and multifaceted view of magic that recognized its potential for benefit. Witchcraft in African cultures, along with practices like voodoo and hoodoo, represent rich spiritual beliefs and rituals that have evolved over centuries. These practices, while often grouped under the broad term witchcraft, have distinct characteristics and histories. In many African cultures, a healer may use their knowledge of herbs, rituals, and the spiritual world to counteract the harm caused by others. In traditional West African spiritual belief system involves the use of magical objects which are believed to protect people. These practices often involve the use of amulets or charms which are believed to contain magical powers. Voodoo or Vodou is a more religious practice. It is a religion that originated in West Africa but is most closely associated with Haiti where it developed among African slaves and incorporates elements from Roman Catholicism. It also has variations in other parts of the Americas, such as Louisiana voodoo in the United States. Voodoo includes the worship of spirits or loas, ancestors and the use of rituals and ceremonies to communicate with the spiritual world. And finally, hoodoo, which is a more modern type of practice. Hoodoo is a traditional African-American spiritual practice that developed in the southern United States. It is distinct from voodoo and combines elements of African folk spirituality, Native American herbalism, and European folklore. Hoodoo involves the use of herbs, roots, and other natural elements to create spells, charms, and amulets for healing, protection, and influencing events. Unlike voodoo, hoodoo is not considered a religion but a practice of folk magic. Practices within Native American traditions are deeply rooted in the principles of healing, protection, and the balance and harmony within individuals, the community, and the natural environment. These traditions are brought to life by dedicated individuals known as medicine people, shamans, or healers, depending on the specific tribe or culture. Their roles are multifaceted and vital to the well-being and continuity of their communities. Shamans, in particular, embody a unique blend of healer, protector, and spiritual guide. They possess an extensive understanding of herbal remedies, leveraging the natural world's healing powers to treat physical and spiritual maladies. Their knowledge is not limited to physical health. Shamans are also the spiritual custodians of their communities, engaging in rituals, creating talismans, and invoking protective spells to shield their people from harm and negative energies. In their role as spiritual mediators, shamans communicate with the spirit world through visions, dreams, and trance states. This connection allows them to offer guidance and wisdom, helping individuals navigate life's challenges and uncertainties. They are instrumental in deciphering the messages and lessons from the spiritual realm, providing counsel that is deeply intertwined with the community's values and beliefs. Furthermore, shamans play a central role in the ceremonial life of their communities. They lead rituals that mark significant life milestones, seasonal shifts, and other communal events. These ceremonies are not only spiritual in nature, but also serve to strengthen social bonds, reinforce cultural identity, and ensure the tradition's transmission to future generations. Through these communal rituals, shamans help to sustain the cultural fabric and spiritual vitality of their people.
Wicca is a modern pagan, witchcraft religion that has gained popularity across the globe over the past century. It was developed in England during the first half of the 20th century and was introduced to the public in 1954 by Gerald Gardner, a retired British civil servant and amateur anthropologist. Gardner called it witchcraft and its adherents, the Wicca, and it later came to be known as Wicca. It draws upon a diverse set of ancient pagan and 20th century hermetic motifs for its theological structure and ritual practices. Gerald Gardner is often cited as the father of Wicca for his role in bringing the religion to public attention. After his retirement, Gardner spent time in Asia, where he became familiar with various magical and esoteric traditions. Upon returning to England, he claimed to have been initiated into a new forest coven, where he learned of an ancient yet surviving form of witchcraft. Gardner's claims about the New Forest Coven have been a subject of controversy and skepticism among historians and Wiccans alike, but his teachings formed the basis of what is known today as Wicca. In the 1940s and early 1950s, Gardner began forming his own covens and initiated others into the craft, including notable figures such as Doreen Valiente, who would become an influential witch and author in her own right. In 1954, Gardner published Witchcraft Today, claiming to reveal the existence of a traditional witchcraft religion that had survived the witch persecutions of the early modern period. This was followed by The Meaning of Witchcraft in 1959, further outlining the beliefs and practices of Wiccans. Wicca is a highly diverse religion with no central authority, and practices can vary widely among practitioners known as Wiccans. However, there are some common beliefs and practices among Wiccans. Many Wiccans worship two deities, the goddess and the god, who are sometimes seen as facets of a greater pantheistic godhead. These deities can be understood and approached through various forms drawn from different cultural pantheons. Wicca is a nature-based religion with a deep reverence for the earth and natural cycles, such as the phases of the moon and the changing seasons, which are celebrated through eight seasonal festivals known as the Wheel of the Year. Wiccans practice ritual magic, including spellcasting, through which they believe they can enact change in the physical world. These rituals often take place within a consecrated circle and may involve the use of symbols, candles, herbs, and other tools. The Wiccan Rede is an ethical guideline often summarized as, and it harm none, do what you will, emphasizing the freedom to act alongside the responsibility to avoid causing harm. The threefold law is a moral principle suggests that whatever energy a person puts out into the world, be it positive or negative, will be returned to that person threefold. Since the introduction of Wicca, it has been spread rapidly, especially in the United States and other English-speaking countries. The rise of the internet and social media has also facilitated the growth and diversification of Wicca, making it easier for solitary practitioners to find resources, connect with others, and form online communities. Today, Wicca is recognized as one of the fastest growing religions with adherents from diverse backgrounds seeking its embrace of nature, magic, and personal autonomy. Medieval European witchcraft, as it's commonly understood today, is a complex mix of folklore, Christian theology, and legal procedures that emerged particularly from the late medieval period onwards. The Christianization of Europe, which spanned several centuries, played a significant role in shaping attitudes towards what was considered witchcraft, often conflating pre-Christian pagan practices with heresy and diabolism. Before Christianity spread throughout Europe, various forms of paganism were widely practiced. These often involved reverence for nature, the use of charms and spells, and veneration of deities and spirits linked to the natural world. Such practices were gradually demonized as Christianity took root. As Christian authorities sought to consolidate their spiritual and temporal power, pagan practices were increasingly condemned as heretical and diabolical. Rituals once seen as part of traditional religions were reinterpreted as acts of witchcraft involving worship of the devil. A central feature of the witch stereotype that emerged was the belief that witches made pacts with the devil, renouncing Christianity and pledging loyalty to Satan in exchange for powers to harm others or manipulate natural forces. Witches were believed to attend nocturnal gatherings known as Sabbaths, where they participated in rituals, feasted. These gatherings were often depicted as involving flight on broomsticks or animals. A 
The Witch's Sabbath is a purported gathering of those believed to practice witchcraft and other rituals. The phrase became especially popular in the 20th century. The concept of the Witch's Sabbath combines three older myths, all involving activities at night. A group of female spirits, often with some humans among them, usually led by a powerful supernatural woman. This idea predates Christianity and likely influenced the idea of the Witch's Sabbath directly. A single ghostly hunter seen as cursed, hunting alone. A noisy, chaotic group of the dead, thought to be souls of those who died young or violently, trying to make amends for their sins. This idea seems to have emerged in the Middle Ages, especially from the 11th and 12th centuries. The book Compendium Maleficarum provides a typical image of a witch gathering, describing attendees flying on goats and engaging in rituals dancing in peculiar ways. The concept of the witch's Sabbath was like a medieval form of viral marketing, spreading fear of witchcraft quickly across Europe. This fear led to the hunting, prosecution, and often execution of those accused of witchcraft. Descriptions of these Sabbaths often came from authorities like priests and judges who weren't actually present at such events. These accounts are generally seen as doubtful reflections of reality, shaped more by the interrogator's expectations and the accused's imagination, influenced by the era's fear and religious intolerance. Some accounts were given under torture, making their reliability even more questionable. In places like Italy, where the Inquisition was less eager to use torture, there were fewer accusations of witchcraft and a general skepticism about the existence of witch gatherings. Many accusations about the witch's Sabbath, such as practicing magic, were also made against various marginalized groups throughout history. The term Sabbath itself, which means a day of rest, was used to describe these gatherings, showing a twisted reflection of Christian or Jewish holy days. Some tried to link these gatherings to heretical Christian groups to justify persecution. Recent scholars suggest that while the more horrific descriptions of the witch's Sabbath were likely invented by inquisitors, some accused witches might have played into these stereotypes, drawing on existing beliefs and rituals to describe their supposed gatherings. The way Christian missionaries viewed African spiritual practices was similar to the European view of the witch's Sabbath, with suspicion and misunderstanding, often conflating local beliefs with witchcraft and leading to condemnation rather than understanding. After Christianity gained popularity, a variety of practices previously accepted in diverse cultures began to be viewed with suspicion, deemed as originating from the devil. In response, authorities, driven by the need to align societal norms with the emerging Christian values, established specific laws. These regulations delineated which practices were forbidden, marking a significant shift in the social and religious landscape. This transition reflected the broader effort to define a Christian orthodoxy and suppress any rituals or beliefs considered incompatible with its teachings. As Christianity solidified its influence, certain practices were scrutinized and collectively labeled under the umbrella of witchcraft, specifically categorized into what were known as the, the prohibited arts. This classification served as a framework to identify and condemn a range of activities considered heretical or contrary to Christian doctrine. The establishment of these categories was a clear manifestation of the Church's attempt to guide moral conduct and delineate acceptable from unacceptable spiritual practices. The categories of the arts were geomancy, hydromancy, aeromancy, pyromancy, chiromancy, and scapulomancy. The art of geomancy was one of the more popular forms of divination practiced during the Renaissance. It is a form of divination in which any question may be answered by casting sand, stone, or dirt on the ground and reading the shapes, using tables of geomantic figures for interpretation. Hydromancy, a form of divination using water, is typically used with scrying. Water is used as a medium for scrying to allow the practitioner to see illusionary pictures within it. Hydromancy originated from Babylonia and was popular during Byzantine times, whereas in medieval Europe, it was associated with witchcraft. Aeromancy divination consisted in tossing sand, dirt, or seeds into the air and studying and interpreting the patterns of the dust cloud or the settling of the seeds. This also includes divination coming from thunder, comets, falling stars, and the shape of clouds. Pyromancy is the art of divination which consisted of signs and patterns from flames. There are many variations of pyromancy depending on the material thrown into a fire and it is thought to be used for sacrifices to the gods and that the deity is present within the flames with priests interpreting the omens conveyed. 
Chiromancy is a form of divination based on reading palms and based on intuitions and symbolism with some symbols tying into astrology. A line from a person's hand that resembles a square is considered a bad omen whereas a triangle would be a good omen. This idea comes from the trine and square aspect in the astrological aspects. Scapulomancy was a form of divination using an animal's scapula. The scapula would be broken and based on how it was broken it could be used to read the future. It was generally broken by heating it with hot coals until it broke. The witch hunts, as we commonly understand them, began to take shape in the late medieval period around the 15th century. This period saw a shift from viewing witchcraft as a form of heresy to seeing it as a malevolent, diabolical crime against society. The Catholic Church played a significant role in the early development of the witch hunts. In 1484, Pope Innocent issued a law which acknowledged the existence of witches and granted inquisitors the authority to prosecute witchcraft in Germany. This bull, along with the publication of the Malleus Maleficarum or the Hammer of Witches in 1487, a manual for identifying, prosecuting and executing witches, contributed significantly to the witch hunt fervor. As European countries underwent various forms of centralization and state formation, secular courts also began to prosecute witchcraft aggressively. Witch hunts and trials were not uniform but varied greatly depending on local laws, traditions, and the attitudes of local judicial authorities. The witch hunts reached their peak between the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Regions such as the Holy Roman Empire, France, the British Isles, and Scandinavia saw significant numbers of trials and executions. It's estimated that tens of thousands of people were executed for witchcraft in Europe between the 15th and 18th centuries, with a significant number of these occurring in the German states. Witch trials often relied on torture to extract confessions, leading to a high rate of execution among those accused. The stereotypical image of a witch, a woman, often elderly or marginalized, consorting with a spirit and engaging in magic, was largely a product of this period. However, it's important to note that not only women were accused, men, children, and entire families could be implicated. By the late 17th and early 18th centuries, the witch hunts began to decline. This was due to a variety of factors, including the increasing skepticism of the educated elite regarding the existence of witchcraft, legal reforms that made convictions more difficult, and changing social and economic conditions. The last known execution for witchcraft in Europe took place in Switzerland in 1782. The Salem Witch Trials, a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts, occurred between February 1692 and May 1693. This episode is one of the most notorious cases of mass hysteria and has been used as a cautionary tale about the dangers of isolationism, religious extremism, false accusations and lapses in due process. The Puritans, who had settled in Salem Village in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, lived in a society deeply immersed in religious fervor and engaged in constant fear of the devil's influence. The community was also experiencing social strife and economic stress, with disputes over property lines, grazing rights and church privileges. These tensions created a fertile ground for accusations of witchcraft. The witch trials began in January 1692 when Elizabeth Paris and Abigail Williams, the daughter and niece of Reverend Samuel Paris, started to exhibit strange behaviors and symptoms, convulsions, uncontrollable outbursts of screaming, and claims of being poked with pins. A local doctor, unable to diagnose their conditions, suggested witchcraft might be the cause. The accusations soon spread, and more girls began to show similar symptoms leading to a widening circle of accusations. The first to be accused of witchcraft were Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and Tituba, an enslaved woman of South American origin owned by Reverend Paris. These women were perceived as social outcasts, fitting the community's expectations of what a witch was. Tituba's confession likely coerced that she was involved in witchcraft and her descriptions of a black dog, red cats, and a yellow bird engaging with her in the work fueled the hysteria further. As the hysteria spread, the number of accusations grew, and the jails began to fill with accused witches. The trials were characterized by a lack of proper legal representation for the accused, the use of spectral evidence, a testimony that the accused spirit appeared to the witness in a dream or vision, and the application of tests, such as touching, wherein the accused witch would touch a victim, and if the victim's symptoms abated, the accused was deemed guilty. 
by the fall of 1692, 20 people had been executed for witchcraft 19 by hanging and one, Giles Corey, pressed to death for refusing to enter a plea. At least five others died in jail awaiting trial. The Salem witch trials ended in May 1693, when Governor William Phipps, influenced by growing public unease and the intervention of his own wife being questioned for witchcraft, ordered the release of all accused witches still in custody and dissolved the special court. A superior court later acquitted most of the remaining accused or pardoned them. The trials left a lasting impact on the American consciousness. In the years that followed, there was a general recognition of the miscarriages of justice that had occurred, with public and private apologies from some of the individuals involved in the colonial legislature. The tragedy of Salem has since become synonymous with paranoia, injustice and the breakdown of community ethics under the influence of fear and suspicion. The phenomenon of witchcraft has left an indelible mark on the cultural, religious and social landscapes of societies around the world. From the harrowing witch hunts of early modern Europe and colonial America to the emergence of a more modern spiritual path, the concept of witchcraft has evolved, reflecting the changing fears, values and understandings of the communities it touches. The rise of neo-pagan movements like Wicca in the 20th and 21st centuries highlights a positive reclamation and transformation of the witchcraft narrative. Wicca, with its emphasis on reverence for nature, the divine feminine and masculine and ethical principles such as the Wiccan reader and the threefold law, offers a spiritual path that seeks harmony with the natural world and personal empowerment. It represents a significant shift from the persecution of alleged witches to the celebration of witchcraft as a legitimate and enriching religious practice. The influence of witchcraft on the world is multifaceted, embodying both the capacity for human beings to demonize the misunderstood and the potential for spiritual renewal and connection.